The fuck? The fuck is funny? Fucking bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one like it. Now I want to welcome y'all to the moment of truth this week on the uh, the Truth and the Rain podcast, and I want to give y'all a little piece of advice because I feel that uh, you are worthy of something nice and. Uh, Anytime you're twitching for an itching that's uh, nastier than uh, pubic lice, I'm going to always stay as cool as ice. And I'm down the ride. Just name your price. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the truth and the rain. 100,000 to one. The creepiest rang on the nigga fang a little bitch. You little Funky ass bitch. I think I slurred the word a little bit. I want to say it one more time. Well, go ahead. Hundred thousand for the cheapest ring on a nigga fang a little bitch. Hmm. Okay. Well. All right. That's so I'm glad you were able to repeat so you could get someone else's word straight. Uh, I just uh, wanted to get my flow right. You. you know. <laughs> just remember, it ain't on me or around me. It's in me. So it's 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 good. You can yeah. quote you can quote brilliance if you're coming from a brilliant place. You absolutely can. Hey, I want to say. Welcome to everyone, and thank you to everyone who attended or shared feedback or any piece of uh, media or info for the uh, networking friends on yester evening. Uh, yeah. It was uh, successful. Um, I think it will be a great platform for us to continue to build upon uh, as we continue to unite and embark upon. Together we go farther. So, yeah, let's keep that shit rolling. So, we go hop right on in this week. We go hop right on in. So, let me ask you this shit here. What do you do in a situation? Let's say you you are, I don't even know. You know how, like, sometimes on Facebook, if you follow somebody, you'll get tagged, like, even if they do something on somebody else's shit. So uh, that's why that happens. Yeah. So let's say that happens, and it's like your man's girl who posted him, and it tags you because you follow him, but you kind of scrolling loosely accidentally. You either like one of her <laughs> her pics or accidentally <laughs> start following her. Are you? Are you? You go undo it, or you just go let it ride. You know what I'm saying? Because that nigga don't follow your old lady. Y'all ain't never done shit like that. Y'all just be like, nah, we we just keep like shit like that separate. So the nigga, run this back. The nigga whose girl I'm following is who? So, <clears throat> all right. So, like I'm saying, like on Facebook, mm-hmm. if you follow somebody. Right. Another person could post a pic or something of them or tag them in something. And because you follow them, you will be notified. Mm-hmm. But then you go on there and let's say once you get notified, when you scrolling because you see the notification, maybe to like the fact that he's in the pic, you accidentally like either a pic of his girl or either start <laughs> following his girl. I think. Do you let it ride or you be like, what the fuck? Just take the shit back. I think if you have to overthink it like that, then you might you might be up to some shit. Because if you ain't worried about it and, you know, your partner know, you know, like, I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, because, I mean, I know it. Y'all ain't never did that shit before? I know, and but you I mean. Like a swim, a, a bathing suit pick. But I'm saying, like, if. If he want to know and ask, I'm like, look, nigga, it's, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I should be good enough with my man. And if it happened, like, look, you know, I've never liked a pic of any woman you've ever, you know. That's not true. I mean, if you, you know, you know me, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a cool ass nigga when it comes to the double tap. Yeah, I'll, I'll double tap people on through. People who don't double tap for me, I don't mind. You know, I just, just tap. You know, I'll go ahead and tip tap. So um, I'm really not. And for me, if I got to look to see who is liking my girl's pick, I'm in a bad spot with my girl. Yeah. That's uh, that's just like 
that little mold, but you don't see the underlying filth and dirt that led up to that motherfucking that that issue on your face, like that big ass zit coming to a head. Right. So okay. yeah, I, I just think like, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, I would just I would just go ahead and let it ride because it's gonna look more suspicious if you unlike it. Because mm-hmm. now it looks like you were sneakingly scrolling and you <laughs> got, got caught up in some shit. Like, damn, boom. You know what I mean? And like, so I don't even. I, that's a new term for me. I guess that nigga says sneak scrolling. Yeah, so, sneak scrolling. You know, how could saying? you be sneak scrolling on your own? Nigga, phone? everybody that did that. You got this one bitch you might use to fuck with or something. You like, man, let me see the bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody got one nigga. Like, uh, damn. Like, she. Uh, let me see what she uh, got going on. Let me uh, see if she's possibly. What the fuck? If, she got if her on. words prove true. Like, yeah, I can say that I've done that before. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? That's all right, nigga. I'm gonna find somebody to appreciate me. Is anybody appreciating this motherfucker yet? <laughs> I remember you know, this nigga <laughs> said he was doing that shit, nigga. He was a comedian, man. <laughs> and he said that the worst motherfucker feeling, he was like, he was on this girl page and he see this nigga liking all this shit. So he looked on this nigga page. He was like, man, I was mad as fuck, man. This nigga interested as hell. This nigga got a lot of shit going on. This nigga make music. This nigga be traveling the world. This nigga be jumping out of bunch. Like, I'm interested in following this nigga's life. You know what I'm saying? That shit was hilarious, nigga. Man. All right, so let me ask you this. Now, we we had this kind of conversation earlier, and y'all need to be thankful that we starting to invite y'all into our offline conversations a little bit more. Because some of the shit that we talk about offline and game that we just be throwing out, that shit really needs to come at a premium. And it's going to start at a price, of course. <laughs> um, So, by the way, and we got, oh, T-shirt this week while I'm thinking about it. uh, You know what I'm saying? Be needed, not needy. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you have a need for whoever you with. So that'll be in, in the shop tomorrow. But anyway... So, we was talking earlier. At this stage in your life, could you wife a hoe? And then we broke it down and said, what would be, like, the difference? Would you tolerate, like, hoeing that people just know somebody is a hoe? Or is there a boundary set when there's documented hoeing? And documented hoeing would be, like, a sex tape. Um, What else did we say? Uh, document hoeing is just when you the shit you do mm. you do on like a public platform so everybody it's just not like need to know or secretive or there's no discretion involved yeah. basically man you just you just out there you know? yeah. you're just all the way fucking out there yeah so so, so shit a little bit of your insight there uh brother uh rain yeah I, I think you know um and uh, I'm an 80s baby, you know, in 80. So growing up, for me, these were things that were just like cardinal, you know. It was a different era, you know. Mm-hmm. Like rappers now will speak to how much money they throw in the club. And rappers, they would speak to the fact that they don't have to throw a dime. And these chicks are still around them because they know who they are and they know what they represent. You know, so it's it's a different era. And, and in regards to this situation... A lot of younger cats, cats will come on the show before, uh, shot Triple Coco, oh, sorry, when he came through, that nigga was just like, you know, if a girl got a pass, you know, you know I got a pass too. Like, in hey. their generation, when they see in the, the media that they're exposed to and how women now are sexually empowered, you know, like, they can be, they can be the, the man in this situation. They can be the aggressor. They can be the ones who say, look, this is all I want. You know, stick and move, you know, be be a savage, you know. So for them in that generation, I think it's something that's a little bit more normalized. For me, like, the sex tape shit, that, that won't even really, that won't be a deal breaker for me because it's. It wouldn't be? It would have to be the time frame of it happening. Like, because if you fuck with somebody for a long ass, you fuck with somebody for five, six years and they got a tape. I mean, what the fuck does that mean? That don't mean, you know, because tapes just stick. But I mean, that don't mean that she's, you know, like. Well, if it's like a tape, like at like a random party. Oh, she's just fucking somebody, sucking somebody off at a party or yeah. something. 
I mean, at the same time, man, all it is is a visual to what you already know. Okay. If you already know she a host, I like that. That's I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily trip on that. What I would trip on is the like how you conduct yourself. If you if you hoeing or you doing hoeish activities and you making it known and you're open and you don't have tact and you don't have discretion, you know, there are certain characteristics. You know, I like bad girls, but I like, I mean, shit. You know, I like a certain amount of discretion. Uh, I like a certain amount of um, of w- wanting to know the unseen, you know. Uh, I want to feel like I'm not the next person to see it. I'm someone special who you're allowing to see it. Right. So, um, if you still hoeing, no, I'm not with it. If um, if you out in the public with your hoeing, I don't I don't really like that. But as far as as, as like <clears throat> wife and a hoe, if your past is your past, man, I'm I'm not in a place where I would really trip on that. You know, we all got a past and we all got a goal of you know how you get there. Everybody doesn't become the best version of themselves because they did everything right. Mm-hmm. You know. And I'm the same way. So you, some things get reinforced through a hard road. And if you love who that person is, man, fuck that. Like, it's just yeah. another, it's just another vice, man. We always like, don't, don't love hoes, you know. Don't, don't do things that are counterproductive to our own culture, you yeah. know. When you know, if somebody say, "Oh, she's a queen," you're like, "Oh, he's a sucker. He just really, really thirsty, just trying to fuck. He don't think that way anyway." You yeah. know, don't say these hoes fuck these bitches, but these are your sisters, these are your cousins, these are your yeah. aunties, these are your daughters, these are your mothers. And I have to remind myself of that, too. So the hoeing activity, be I, if you want to be with Rain, the hoeing needs to be in your past. And yeah. uh, it, it doesn't need to be on Front Street. That's more preferable preferable for me. Even with growth, I I used to say, like, if I did wife a hoe, I would have to move away. But... I wouldn't even do that. We was talking about that early because I'm trying to get her to run away from a past. I'm telling her that I'm accepting. So, you know what I'm saying? We go just have to ride it out. But as far as like. But what if y'all both just want to move? Well, that's cool. But I ain't going to make it where that's mandatory. Like, yeah, we could do this, but we got to move. And then the other part, like. When we was talking earlier, another interest, interesting perspective came up when we talk, talked about documented versus non-documented hoeing. So if there's no documented hoeing and people are just saying somebody's a hoe, a person might not be a hoe with everybody. And what that means, like, shit, they might get super nasty for you or they might let you fuck or they might have told somebody else they couldn't. And you did something they couldn't do. And now they don't put a label on that person saying that person a hoe. And that might not be the case. Yeah, man. A lot of niggas throw a lot of labels out there for different reasons. Some because they run their mouth too much. Some because they feelings hurt because they didn't hoe for them or do what somebody else said they did. You know, and that's 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 going and we tiptoeing in Atlanta sucker shit. And we going to keep this topic on a, on a, on a just a positive side i don't want to go on a rant on you suck ass niggas man but oh <laughs> so so let me ask you this all right so there there are levels to broke right mm, so we yeah. have i'm broke we have i i can't go or i can't go drop money on a birkin bag for you and not miss it i can't spend 30 grand and say damn i spent 30 grand yeah you know what i'm saying that's correct. Or I'm broke to the point where I'm just sitting down on the couch. I ain't trying to better myself, and I'm just all fucked up. I respect the first one. Absolutely. Hands Not down. the second one. But they both get the same label. And where I'm going with this is because yesterday at the networking event, you played a song. The song was jamming by, I think, Cardi. Mm-hmm. Her new shit. She said, broke niggas don't deserve pussy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I said, I yelled out. I was like, now, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> I am I'm broke. I'm offended. But I'm not going to tell my lady that. You know what I'm saying? And she's not going to agree with that. 
So what I'm saying is, she's your lady ain't gonna agree that you're broke. Is that what you say? No, she ain't gonna agree with like just because he's broke, he doesn't <laughs> deserve vagina. So I think we need to really clarify like with that song because someone at her level saying that all these young dumbass chicks will go here is like, oh, if that nigga ain't got like that bag, that nigga don't deserve to, to get fucked. It won't be the first song that, you know, says something like that. And the responsibility for that one, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know why, you know, but I'm going to defend Cardi in the sense that on the flip side, there are a lot of songs where, you know, like we just said, you know, don't don't save a hoe, fuck a bitch, don't tease bitch, strip tease bitch, eat a bowl of these bitch, gobble a dick. You know, that was that corrupt shit, you know, just there's there's song over song over song that does it and it should go back to how you how you was locked in, how you was raised, how you how you were loaded because you gotta have the discretion to know the difference. Well, same with a, a song that's saying something that might be disrespecting or devaluing a woman because that happens a lot. You know, women are empowered. You know, it. you have to understand that if somebody makes a song like that, you just got to understand where you are in your life. And it's almost like a drug you got to use responsibly. You know, you got to understand where you are with that shit. Like, same as if you hear a motherfucker making a song about killing someone. You need to understand where you are in your life. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you should devalue life. You know what I'm saying? If you hear just because you heard a whole bunch of songs of motherfuckers say, I kill you, fuck you, and you've never killed someone, but now the the value of life to you is just overall lowered, then you gotta have that you gotta come to an age of accountability where you like, man, I can't if you know something like that is gonna fuck you up, you need to not partake of it. Like, you know, let me say, like, lean. I know I don't need to be leaning. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, you know. When that shit was prescribed to me, you know, just I'll use it, but I know I don't need to be leaning. I know how that shit affect me. I know how groggy I get. So, like, if you know something ain't going to put you in the best position, don't be around. Like, if you know you're going to go to this spot and you're going to wild the fuck out, don't go there. Don't be there just to be like, I ain't afraid to be there just because these niggas are going to be. If you know it's a situation where it can put you in any position, whether it's a song, whether it's a thought process, uh, because most of it is really more of a thought process anyway, whether it's song, music, imagery, visualization, whatever. Just know how you got to be responsible. Not to be too long with it, but you got to be accountable. You said the key word, and it segues perfectly to the next topic. So Merv and I were talking about this earlier. Mervelous. The media, man. <clears throat> so if we think about... Fuck them. A couple months ago, NBA young boy got caught with all these guns at his video shoot. Got out the next day. Had another video shoot a couple weeks ago with the same shit. They ain't catch him a number in that video showing guns or whatever he doing. Previously to that, you know how Kodak go back and forth to jail and get out. And now people saying he out. This is a clone. Whatever, whatever. They have Fujiano who allegedly cut off his ankle monitor and was running from the police. But then the next day they showed him doing an interview and people was like, doing an interview? Then, of course, they had the Pooh Shiesty thing where they was talking about, okay, he was doing X, Y, and Z and allegedly there's footage of him doing that, but he's doing whatever he's doing. So what I started thinking about, man, is like it seemed like the media – is trying to program to our youth that there's no accountability for these actions. You know what I'm saying? And it's like they can they see they do it and can go to the studio and make music. But if they go do the same thing, they got they gotta go do 30 years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they not understanding. Do you think that's accurate or am I looking too deep into it? Like what you think? I mean, that's that's like an onion. You got to peel a lot of layers back, bro. I mean, in a nutshell, I can say, yeah, I, I guess I, I guess I would agree. You know, it's like uh, it's an interesting topic, man. It's you know, motherfuckers just it just goes back to that accountability. Motherfuckers don't give a fuck. 
Yeah, you know? but I mean, I don't know, man. I, it just it just seems like shit now. Really, I don't know if it's weird, like understanding I have now itself, but it seems like shit be really targeted for people not to be successful or have like the same mind state. Like I was thinking, oh, of something. absolutely. Not to go too far off or get too deep, but even how it was like always, I remember when I was coming up, man, like same shit, 80s baby. Like light skinned women were praised. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you gotta get you a red bone. And yeah, they yeah. talked about this shit like, yeah, it was great, but they had flipped it to make it think like light skin was great because the white people's skin couldn't handle being out in the sun like that. They wanted to be, but they had to be in the house. So they made it seem like it was more superior. And they made the black people who was outside getting the natural melanin that their skin was, you know, able to, yeah, they devalued it. Like, look at that black ass, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, all I, I, I agree, and 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 I hit 100%, 100% with that. The way I would say accountab- accountability ties back to that is you got to know that these things are set up this way. Like mm. there, there is a reason it's not just a happenstance. There is a reason why most of the mainstream music that you hear in hip hop, mainstream hip hop involves guns, drugs, murder, and misogyny, like mm. consistently. There are reasons why economically it's more difficult when you're African American historically to even be able to get a loan to get licensing loans to, to start businesses, you know, get opportunity to even have a mortgage to become an owner, to mm. actually have real estate. These are not coincidences. Like this is all designed for you to not be successful. That's why so many fall to the wayside. And it's like I know it's if I know, I get it, I get it. Like if you haven't had anyone to show you the right way and you see so many examples of the wrong way, and those are the things that you align to your normalized life. It's hard to, for somebody to get that influence and get it right and to see it. But it is it, possible. But it's, the system is designed for you not to do it, but it's on you to do it. You know, mm-hmm. so got to be accountable. But don't be be aware. Be right. aware. Right. Uh, hundred thousand for the cheapest ring on the nigga finger, little bitch. I see that's the kind of shit that be turning these down mm. y'all folks up like that. You know what I'm it turned me up when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Now we talk about some shit that's good about the street. I mean, right? I mean, but like I like, said, but at the same time, what are you going to, I say that to say, what are we going to do? Are we going to persecute people who, who make this type of music? Hell no. no. I'm are we going to, and are we going to, yeah, we're not going to persecute them and we're not going to just not listen to it. So you, you yeah. know. Yeah, hundred thousand for the cheapest ring on nigga ring a little bit. I enjoy some uh, first cousin future. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's the homie. You know? And I, I, you know, not to even rant about it, but I don't understand why women always saying future so toxic. Future hey, so hey, toxic. That, right? What like, about the women who go to him? I mean, like when I see a post, they, they'll get a picture of him looking like an animated picture with a flute, and then they'll they'll make a comment. Yeah. Like, I didn't see anywhere that Future made that specific comment. Like, they'll say some shit, and then everybody like, Future's so toxic. Yeah. It's like, no, it's a meme, and then you say some shit, yeah. and now y'all just give Future credit for this shit. Future's so toxic. Yeah, the one he, the one they put up with was like, I, I cheated on them with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit was damn hard. Like, <laughs> hey, man, you, you the chosen one, baby. I t- you know, come on. Because <laughs> of Future, man. Uh, so check it. You had a dope ass topic, nigga. This shit, don't even try it, y'all. We already got the shit set up for the t-shirt. It's documented copyright here by us saying this shit. So you see what the date is. You see what the time is. So don't try that shit. But anyway, the nigga said, why will a nigga make his side chick his main chick? but will not make his side hustle his main hustle. Now, if that ain't a bar, I don't know what's a bar. But mm. and go ahead and damn break this shit down on these damn... <clears throat> I thought you was talking about to go ahead and wrap, to wrap that shit on through. Um, yeah, what I mean by that, right, is like... Oh, and for that topic... 
that's, that's not what I that's not what you were, he's like but hey that's not what I was going for but hey it's all good we, hey we live it man you know I I think there, yeah. there we go there we yeah, we'll go back and just get right in a good vibe with it but yeah man like a nigga whether in the moment whether impulse whether he was thinking with his dick or whether everybody else leave him a nigga will make his side chick his main chick these things happen Women stay down, and then they finally get the man if you stay down. It's a risky game, but you, you stay down, you know, it works out in somebody's favor. But a nigga won't turn his side hustle into his main hustle. And here's a simple reason why. And we talked about this before in a lot of conversations, and this is something I had to reinforce in myself, man. You, It don't matter how talented you are, you can't have – full-time dreams and like part-time effort mm. like you can't be like i want to be a full-time hold on, this. Hold on, go ahead yeah you gotta talk to them about yeah that. i'm gonna get it real quick about they part-time i'm effort. gonna get it real quick yeah. that part-time effort mm. and you really want to get it you ain't really got no money mm. you ain't even shopping tidbits you pay less. Mm-hmm. You second guess. Second guess. You didn't want to move. Want to move. You had nothing to prove. You had nothing to show. You with your hoe. You ain't even trying to stack. Letting it go. Ooh. Fuck that little money. It's cool. I'll go out and drink like fool. I'll mm-hmm. go out and buy a couple round. I'll go ahead and get a couple sacks. Y'all mm-hmm. nigga tripping off this and that. There you go. But yeah. I'm done with that. Good shit. Good Bitches. Shit. Bitch. I'm a four cheaper ring on the nigga finger, little bitch. All right, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, man, so, but you just won't have that work ethic around what you really want to do. You'll give all your energy to your job, then you'll go and give energy to your kids, and then you'll clean up, and then you'll cook, and then you'll be like, I had a productive day. But you ain't do none of the shit that you wanted to do for you, even though you worked hard and you did what you were supposed to do. Like, that process of going from that workload to that dream requires a level of sacrifice that is going to chisel you for where you got to be. But why do you think that is, though? Do you think it could be like, what if it's a situation where someone really finds that fulfillment and just emptying themselves into others? Like, all I want to do is empty myself into other people. There are people like that. Yeah. So what, what if that's like the situation where it's like, hey, well, the, 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 the slippery slope that comes with that is if you're going to live your life filling up other cups, and I know some people that do, what happens is they're filling other people's cups, but they also begin to resent the people who don't appreciate what they fill into their cup. Or mm. they begin to think about how much they've drained by pouring into others. So <laughs> they meet somebody else, real shit. They meet somebody who they get cup you really should pour into, they're so apprehensive, they're not pouring. They're Mm. not filling your cup. Mm. And now you're not enjoying you being the type of person that is a giver. You're not enjoying that. So that's the slippery slope. If you want to be that, bro, ain't nothing wrong with living your life, loving your kids, loving God, and just being happy and being humble. Even though the TV in the world doesn't say that, man, just, nigga, sit in silence. When it's hard sometimes and it's fucked up, just sit in silence and you can really just hear and see what's real and what's really out there. Like, just sit in silence. You'll know, you'll be able to differentiate between the real shit and the bullshit. Fuck all of that shit popping. You live, you die. What are you doing between uh, and, and just drinking, smoking, fucking? That's not gonna be, that's not what you wanna be your staple, man. It's gotta be something else. Got to. Nigga, I heard a nigga say one time, nigga had a kid like early. I think he had a kid, maybe like 17 or something. And the nigga had said, and of course he had other kids throughout the years, and they was like, man, you, you've been working so hard ever since I knew you. And the nigga probably was like 28, 29 then, and he said, man, my life been over since 17. And some motherfuckers really feel like when something like that coming to the equation, their life is over. Like it's a death sentence. And it's like, no, nigga, like, you still live like, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can you can still be, like, a cool parent and damn do other shit. 
But I mean, I, I think part of that, because I've said that before, is like when you say your life is over, it is in a sense because your life and doing the things that you're doing, you're right, you can still do it. But now all of those things are incorporated around a level of responsibility that you didn't oh, have. Yeah. So now that, but and, and overall that's a good thing. Like to have that level of responsibility now. And not to stop upon living. You. No, I'm not saying stop yeah. living, but I'm saying that's a good thing to have that level of responsibility. You mm -hmm. can still do the things that you want to do, but yes, when you say your life is over, I think that's part of the mental process of understanding that that version of yourself, that version of your life. Like if you wanted to binge drink every night, if you're a good parent, you just may not be able to binge drink all damn night because you're going to be a good parent at some point, you know. So it's just like you can still, yes, you can still drink, but now you have to have a moderation and a responsibility, right, to this child and what image you want them to see. And so, so you can still do it, but yeah, I just feel like that version of you is dying, but that's a good thing. So let me ask you this about side hustles, because I thought about this, man. What if, what if it's this with niggas and side hustles, right? What if these niggas not working on their side hustles because they really don't have a side hustle? You know, some niggas will really just say they got a side hustle to make it sound cool. Like yeah. real shit. Niggas will say that to make you think they grind. They're like, oh, they yeah, man, I do this on, on the side. And them niggas ain't doing shit on the side. So maybe... That's what it is. Just heavy cap on the side hustle side and not really that they putting a the side chick first. They really just don't have shit going on and they don't know how to activate shit going on. I mean, yeah, the side chick don't come first. It just comes with the most convenience. That's right there. Like you're mm -hmm. creating a business model, going through the, the ups and downs and grinds of trying to get proposals that are accepted in business to get financers and leverage you know, looking at all of those things, that's not that's not pretty. But you know, just a chick who's right there, that's pretty. While she's up there just loving the fuck out of you and making you and your balls feel like you goddamn he man, that's you know, that's pretty. That's that's so it's not I don't think I was alluding to you choosing one over the other. It's just it's easier for motherfuckers to do that as opposed to do the grinding. If you if you capping about a side hustle, that that's a different that's a different layer, but it's still fucked up. You still you still ain't doing nothing but talk shit. Motherfuckers cap and talk up about themselves all the time. Motherfuckers, you never really you only hear extremely think about it. How many people do you really hear talk talk themselves down? <laughs> if they give it as a like <laughs> Outside of somebody that you you know how it just there's two times when people I talk themselves it. down, like there's one time there's one type of person who will say and they're just like well you know no one likes me I don't have anyone like those are those situations where <laughs> someone's esteem is in place and they have self esteem issues now you need to you know right. whether you take that responsibility or not if you care about them they need they need to get that validation from some source you know whether it's you or elsewhere that you know you have self worth yeah. but Niggas, we think about niggas who got money, who really get money. Don't be like, nigga, I got so much motherfucking money. Them niggas be like, man, you know, I ain't, I ain't really got it. You know, I ain't, I ain't making, I ain't yeah. really making no ain't noise. Making no noise. Yeah. Ain't shit, ain't shit going on, man. I'm just low. just yeah. trying to hold it in the road. You know what I'm saying, niggas, <laughs> niggas, the niggas who don't have shit going on now, they will talk themselves up. You know what I'm saying? But think about the people. Who are not who don't have esteem issues who really talk themselves the fuck down. <laughs> Them the motherfuckers who really yeah they're the ones who really move and they the ones who really because they ain't even got to do all of that. The circle of the circle of the doers you see and that's the thing that doers will peep out about your punk ass. The <laughs> circle of motherfucking doers right they know that you are not in the circle of the do because you are you have too much time dedicated to be in the circle of the talk. You are you already you already in that shit. You already with that that bullshit, the waste time shit, the shit that you gonna circle you gonna talk. you gonna circle back around to the the moves that I make. Uh, so the fact you talking about it, I already know you're not a doer. You're not a doer. You're not. So <laughs> what the, the right? Yeah, I could definitely. What am I gonna? Do talk myself up to your talking ass? <laughs> so you could go tell mother. mother. Nigga be talking himself up. 
shit, you know, uh, man, look, <laughs> I got, look, I got, I got, I got four different businesses. You know what I'm saying? I, had to, you know, nigga had to diversify shit. You know, I rap, but you know, nigga can't just rap. You know what I'm saying? I got my own label. I'm getting my shit started out. You know, shit. Then I got my clothing line. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back in clue, back in school. You know what I'm saying? I'm at Tech. I'm gonna get some class. I'm getting my shit. <laughs> I got my certifications, you know, shit. I, nigga still be hustling too, you know, nigga can't let the streets all the way go. You know what I'm saying? Real life, that nigga ain't been to school since freshman year, and that was tech. You failed out, you're not taking any classes. You sell a couple little nickel bags to try to squeeze a three for ten just so you could kind of smoke for free for a day. Um, <laughs> yeah, the label that you talked about, you, you got it on one T-shirt that's faded out. <laughs> And it's you. You can't even really see the label. You the only person on the label. You haven't signed to it, and you made like one song three years ago. You feel me? But they make they dress all, all them, they dress all of that shit up to sound like that. Yeah, but I'll go say out of all them, how many would you say he really doing? Zero. Yeah. Zero. Uh, no. Yeah. Mm, no. And again, there's some people. And again, that's the thing. Like. And when you meet somebody at face value, you have to, I mean, you got to see it. You got to validate it. Like, unless you, there are people who talk and make moves, but are you now in the circle of someone who is talking to help make moves? Or are you in the circle of someone who talks to talk? <laughs> Just, you know? I hate old nigga who call you, but a dick ain't nothing worse than an old, but I got to get up there and holler at your ass nigga, boy. That motherfucker, boy, I got to so, get over there and holler at you. I get, you get that a lot. It's okay. Boy, I got to get over there and holler at you, boy. Boy, what y'all got going, I got to get over there and holler at you. That, Nigga, that's just come a on. Nice, that's just a nice way of them saying, man, uh, I I enjoy the times that we do hang out. Like, that's what they really are meaning. But they, you know, so I don't get mad when some people say that. Because, I mean, I got so much, you know, I got so much family that's not here. Yeah. All of them, man, I got this one cousin, nigga. <laughs> This nigga in Wisconsin, you know, he be checking in the podcast a lot. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he was all this the time. Nigga, he was fucked up. This nigga, he'll hit me up. We'll actually talk on the phone once, maybe every four, five years. Last time nigga hit me up, um, you know, just fun fact, not to call him out. It's just a fact of life. This is a cousin. Most of the women I've ever known him today have been white. Okay. So last couple, this was years ago. He hit me up. I hadn't even bought my house yet. What up, cuss? FaceTime me. Yeah, man, I gotta come down. There. I gotta come and fuck with you, man. He had a he had a black girlfriend. This is my little chocolate drop. Oh shit, <laughs> that's what he called it. I can yeah. dig it. This is my little Shout chocolate drop, man. If it's if it's, if it's uh, she was she was mixed. She was actually black. That's why he called her. Oh, I do. Yeah. Like yeah, he actually just he wanted to announce the fact that he was actually okay. with a black girl. Oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> yes, yeah, my little chocolate drop, yeah. man. If it's like we gonna come down, man. We gonna get on the road, man. I'm thinking like you know, man, the week or you know, I I gotta get down there. We used to kick it in the suburbs a long time ago. We were kids and, and never hear from that nigga again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know what I'm saying like I, it's cool, bro. I still yeah. fuck with you. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah, you gotta get up here, cuz. I'm gonna start doing that shit to people, man. Like, come on, cuz. Like, I, I, I would tell them, rain like a smooth way. I'll be pissing people off. Like, motherfuckers are damn text me. And damn, if I know they somebody who be bullshitting and they got an iPhone, I act like I'm texting back <laughs> so they see the text bubbles. And then I just stop. And the motherfuckers might call me and I don't answer. But then I go back like I'm texting and they see the bubbles again that I never send shit. Just to show them, like, that's how you teach people a virtual lesson. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, stop doing shit like that. But, hey, let me ask you this shit. So you out with a nice young lady that... Nice lady. You feel like she hey. might be a dope little lady you want to get to know a little hey, bit nice better. Hey, nice lady. You a dope little lady. I want to get to know... <laughs> Y'all at a hot dollar spot, so ching, ching. she done ordered this hot dollar steak mm. with a lobster tail. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's our first date. Yeah, but but uh, she she, she like worth it. Like you, you like damn man. this chick hard. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? You see her moving, whatever, whatever. So you realize, damn, <laughs> I grabbed the wrong damn jacket. Mm. I don't have my wallet or none of that shit. Now, she already done ordered. Right. You about to order. When you realize you ain't got your shit, now you like, yo, I really love my shit. I'm going to have to, you know what I'm saying, 
you get it, and then I have to either get you back or something. And then she changed her whole order to some cheap ass shit. Would you feel like offended? This nice ass place has cheap shit. Well, I mean, some shit that's not like a hundred dollars a plate. Maybe down to well, you know, she. It really depends on her mindset because she might be doing it not because you know she can't afford it, but she's also might be thinking, "Nah, I know I gotta pay for your shit, and you might be the, <laughs> now." I got to pay for your shit, and you might not pay me back. It's our first date. I don't even know you. So, for but me. But wait, she don't know you, but she ordered right. all this hot dollar shit. Right, she don't know you, but you you took her there because you made it clear that she might be that person. So, in her mind, she's like, this nigga might have just ran game just to, you know, talk up <laughs> the cap about all of this shit. So, then he could come and flip like she, I can understand why a woman would think that way. Like, this nigga is just trying nigga to really scamming? get me to. Yeah, scamming for meals. Like, a nigga scamming for everything. So, I can see why a woman would be like, you know what? Not because she's broke and not because she can't afford it, but like, if she's not going to make a scene and actually feed you, you know, she's going to be like, man, you know, I, I expected even if it was some cheap shit, I was going to be eating for free. And now I'm feeding you some shit. So, I can't. Mm. I can see that, but in this day and age, you know, and you you put me on that shit, like, man, that, you got your smartphone. You should have you, you should you should be able to at least, hey, let me, I'ma sell you the money right now, mm-hmm. like, you know, because I, if you want to salvage that date, bro, and you think she the one, you better get that access to that funds and move that shit from your phone to her. So, even though she's paying for it, in perception, the reality is you've already like you've already sent that money. You know, if the motherfuckers don't take Apple Pay at this swanky spot, hey baby, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna sell you two hundred dollars. I'm gonna just shoot this shit to you. Let me ask you this: You ever been on a joint where you already know in your mind like how much money is in your pocket or so your card? And this, they it's add like, it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've had that feeling. I was younger, and then you just like, <sighs> you know what? I was already planning on going to get some food the other day. I know I'm going to probably get an overcharge. Uh, First of all, let me see. But first, I got to make it through the night. Let's see if I can even pay for this shit tonight. If this goes motherfucking decline or if I go back to my account. Because when you, when, you, when you broke and you go to that account, it used to be scary. before they, That's before they had shit like overdraft protection. That shit was designed to fuck niggas up. So you go to your account. And you look one day and you're like, oh shit, nigga, I got $67? You take out a 20, you take out a 10, you take out a 5 now. They look your shit up. Oh, some transactions didn't follow through in real time, nigga. Boom. You you fucking at negative 120. And now all of them transactions where you sell, you had money and you took out that 5 or 10, they get a $25, uh, $20 late fee on top of your ass. So, bap, 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 bap. So every time you look at your money, you like, and this is what gets you too when you broke. This will really fuck you up. When you like, oh, this shit, you don't know how far it's dropping. So you like went from like oh, sixty dollars, oh, so now you got a hundred, like you got negative fifty. So you are like, okay, I got a hundred. I'm gonna deposit a hundred. So now I got fifty. And then more overdrafts come and hit, and they well, took listen, the fifty man. you put in there. Yeah, that's that broke nigga shit. Yeah, I've been there, baby. Listen, man, you gotta relax. Man. College. Damn, that shit funny as fuck. Yeah, all right, man. Pew, pew. So. Hey, we just go cut this motherfucker a little bit short here tonight. We're going to do it. Saying? We gave y'all some good content to damn. Let's save on your melon. And we hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to let uh, Good Brother and Rain close us out here. Uh, Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. Look, man, make sure you check in with us. I Say Podcast, all one word. You feel me? On IG and on Facebook. Email us some shit. So we can be emailed and we'll talk about the shit you email at I say podcast at Gmail. You bitch. Motherfucker, you know you can damn send some shit in, in the form of music. Like we said, we're going to drop that and bring that back whenever the fuck we feel like it. Because we invented that. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna do what we want to. We, that's like another copyright in the back pocket. But if you want to send us that content, send us that good shit. Send the book, DJRain at gmail.com. 
uh, 40 Days and 40 Nights coming soon, uh, you horse. Uh, you can also call us as well at 864-735-7235. Look, 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 real shit. Please hit us up. If you want to pop your shit, you want to come on the show, we will call you. We'll let you call in and just tell us what's on your mind. You want to rant about some shit these niggas doing this flaw or some shit that's funny as hell. We want to hear you rant, man. So call us and check in. Leave a comment on the I Say Podcast page on any platform and uh, fuck with us. Shout out to Merv, Bo, Mervilus in the gym is the real truth. Got a whole lot of shit popping. I'm uh, DJ Rain, man. We signing out saying we'll see ya. And 100,000 for the achievement rang on a nigga fang, a little bitch. Boo.